Welcome to episode 64 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsberg, and my guest this week is Adam Christensen from the MacCast podcast. Welcome back, Adam. How you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Doing great. You cover a lot of stuff. I do. I do. We, that's, <laughs> we, we try to keep uh, the broad. That, that's not going to say I'm going to talk about all five of those things, but uh, you take you take <laughs> Max out of the equation, and you have most of what Apple makes. Yeah. Well, you know, we got we got to talk about some good things here, and and uh, and I, I love iOS, and I know most of the guests I have on here do as well. So some good stuff. Oh, no, wait. I have a question for you then. Yeah. Are you gonna you, you you well you have iOS and you have tvOS, right. and now you're gonna have to expand to iPadOS. I am, I am. Right, so it's not just iOS anymore. It keeps growing. It does. It keeps growing all the time. <laughs> um. So uh, yeah, uh, what's uh, there's gonna be a lot. There was lots to talk about this in this past week. Uh, we had uh, some news to talk about. Uh, a little bit, There's a little, little bit. bit here, and then uh, throw us out, throw out some uh, discussion topics, including some apps and uh, gear and all that stuff. So let's get cooking here. But of course, the topic of the of, of the week of always has been is uh, Apple Card. Did you? Did you? Yeah, uh, you're gonna make me feel bad. Oh yeah, why? Because <laughs> I like. Oh, I check my email in the app like three. Actually, let's be honest, ten times a day. Like, where's my invite? All right, well, I have a story for you on it. Uh, the uh, uh, the um, I, I did do the, do the same thing, and I got the email today. <laughs> okay, you got the email today. I did. What is why? What, I've been like blacklisted or something. I don't know what's going on. I signed up like literally the minute they put that thing on the website, and nothing, nothing. Yeah. Well, it was congratulations more, to you, though. That's uh, awesome. Uh, well, we'll get back into that in a second. But, oh, okay. Uh, but uh, um, let's just get into the, this new story. Uh, I, I li- we linked in the show notes to app to Mac Rumors. Uh, it was it is what is rolling out to a limited number of customers. Um, as as you said, you've been hitting that button every day, uh, trying to get that gosh darn uh, uh, invite. And um, right. they were only sent. Uh, it was random, and I kept watching, see what people were doing, and uh, and. Uh, I guess a couple of folks that already had had received the physical titanium card, and um, Ooh. and I see uh, Neelay Patel from The Verge uh, had talked about it in this article, um, and uh, it is cool. Uh, I, I, I we all have been itching for it, just just like you have the MacCast the cards. This is going to be my titanium Apple card. I'm a I'm an Apple card holder here, but <laughs> a little bit of woes here. I will we'll, we'll go down that road. I, I did I Uh-oh. didn't expect I didn't expect that I was going to get the. Uh, uh, the email, so I did. Um, well, I have two. I have two Apple IDs. Let's start with that. So right. I have uh, one that I use for purchases, and I have one I use for iCloud. Sure. All, all my credit cards are on the one for iCloud. And of course, which one ca- came? One for the purchases. <laughs> so I have a, a Gmail account, and I have a iCloud.com account. So as soon as I apply for it, and I got it, and it was approved, and yay! I was, I was yay exciting. Um, I can't. I can't put it on my iPhone because my iPhone's backed up on iCloud using the iCloud account so i don't know what i'm gonna do <laughs> so wait so you're saying it has to be tied to it, the iCloud account that's on your phone it can't be a tied to any other email or account that is correct yep i mm. was going back and forth with uh i was going back and forth with uh, uh, goldman sachs all day today and couldn't seem to get a good answer other than close the account and then reapply <laughs> so we'll see what happens i'm gonna sit Type. Which you have to do over the phone, by the way. Yeah, I called them. Yep. Yeah. No, no, no. But I just I found it interesting that they have this super easy, quick sign up on device. But if you want to actually cancel, you got to get on the phone with somebody from Goldman Sachs. Oh, right, right. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I they, was... they won't let they won't let you cancel on device. Oh, no, no, no. So yeah, you right, can right, sign right. Up on device, but you can't cancel, which is just ironic. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because they don't want to lose customers; they want to gain customers. But yeah. it's just funny. It is, and and then uh, I was in chat through iMessage uh, talking to somebody, mm-hmm. and I kept getting transferred and transferred and transferred and transferred. I just had enough for today, so I just left it as is for now. See what happens, and you know, I did. Subs- I did. Ask for them to send the email to my other email address, so I may just apply again. <laughs> there you go. Another, another ding on my credit on my credit uh, report, but um, oh, but yeah, that's okay. 
that's okay. But uh, yeah, it's been there's it's, it's just ama- it's just amazing how much excitement there's been about a credit card. And really, I mean, I know it, it's because <laughs> it's because it's Apple, right? We all love Apple, and yeah, I was reading the um, like consumer awareness of the card is actually just super high too. Oh. Like, oh yeah. A lot of people really are aware that it's a thing, even outside of the you know the geek culture ecosystem and stuff like that. Oh, it is. I mean, the, the reality is, is, I mean, the deals, depending upon your spending habits, aren't even really that good, right? The the cash back and the yeah, it's not bad. You know, one percent, two percent, three percent on Apple purchases, two percent if you use Apple Pay, and then one one percent with the regular card. It's it's all right, right? Yeah. But it's not. It's not anything to write home about. It's not that spectacular. And if you, I I know, like if you buy a lot of stuff on Amazon, it's not going to help you. And there's great Amazon deals. And if you, you you need airline miles, there's there's cards for everybody. Oh yeah. So this one, it really, if you're looking for maximizing the sort of rewards part of it, you really have to be a pretty diehard Apple fan. I think (laughs) you do. Um, I mean, I, mean yeah. I have an Amazon credit card, so I've, I've the, right. the Visa through Chase, and I've been. I actually love that card because that's pretty much my primary card. Is I get right, and you get lots of Amazon. That's the one where you get like three or three yeah. percent on Amazon purchases or yep. something like that. Yep, it's, it's yeah. huge. So I need to get one of those because yeah. we buy a crud ton of stuff on Amazon, and my Apple card's not going to help me out at all with that. It isn't. So this will be a secondary <laughs> card if, for me once I get everything straightened out. The well, inter- at least you can put your Apple purchases on purchases on it and save. You know. Exactly. Or get three percent back on your computer purchases well, or your iOS purchases. And I, I also had the Barclays, the Apple Rewards, the Visa too, which I still. Yeah, have. that one's going away, right? I supposedly it is. It's so far my account's still open and it's not hasn't changed to a different type of card as of yet. I'm got, I want to maybe Bill. I still have almost I have almost enough to get another rewards uh, another hundred dollar reward, so I better uh, get going on that before they maybe pull, they'll pull. Uh, grandfather. The people that have them and just I, I know they're not taking new right. applications. Oh, maybe that's so. it. yeah. For now, they're letting who have accounts uh, do it. So the the interesting thing too was I I did apply using my iPad. I did not use my iPhone when I applied because I clicked the link that was sent to me via email on my iPad and my iPad running I, iPad OS uh, beta. By the way, oh, I was going to say because uh, there's no wallet app on that. There iPad, isn't, right? but you can get to the wallet and Apple Pay in settings. So. Right now, I have my iPad open up, and I'm looking at settings, and it shows you just select the oh, Apple I account. I think I did read. I think yeah. I did read that. Yeah, that you can, you can go through through the there to do it. Yeah. So they. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, and they have all the stuff in there. You, it gives you the credit details, what your what your limit is, what your a- APR is. Um, you can set up Apple Cash. Um, uh, right there, they have buttons so you can. Call. But you can't. You can't. After you have the card, you can't get like the purchase history and the and the right. Um, I believe you can. You'll see the purchase history in the wallet on the iPhone. At least I, I, on the iPhone. Yeah, but I meant you. You don't get like the all the data that you would get. You know, tracking your purchases and stuff like that on the iPad. At no, least that's what I had no, read because I had no, had heard that no. they are planning to do some sort of app it won't be like a it won't be a wallet app but it'll be like a, a apple card management app right. for ipad so so then you can get into the card information so i know my account number right away uh, by going right. and getting that so it's a mastercard of course tells you when it expires you got your uh, security code the whole thing so i do have an account officially i guess <laughs> but it's not I'll have to get a new one. Not, not, At least you'll have an extra titanium Apple card. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe I'll just let it sit for a while, and then when they open things up to apply for everybody, uh, we'll uh, we'll just go. Did you? Again. Did you? Oh, you said you uh, you put the email in on both email addresses, right? I, I did. So you should yeah. be able to get like maybe you'll get another invite. Another invite, or they'll just open it up. Like that's what they're supposed to do. I think towards the end of this month, well, that's what the, what the what the discussion was. So. We will cool. see. So that was uh, that fun thing. Uh, other thing. I haven't that, received the email yet. I just no, checked again. Yeah, you know, you're, you're. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We'll, we'll keep checking as, as we record the show here. Um, <laughs> Maybe it'll happen before the end yeah, of the show. Up across my fingers. Um, uh, the other interesting topic that caught my eye was, you know, that the one, we don't talk about Android here, but uh, of course, Samsung uh, uh, announced that the Galaxy Note 10 had come out and, and uh Lo and behold, it does not have a headphone jack anymore. They caved, according to this article in, my, in the Mac Observer. <laughs> um, so I, I chuckled quite a bit. And uh, yeah, it was uh, 
I seem to remember them having videos about bashing iPhones and saying, oh, nah, nah, we have an iPhone, Jack, and Oh, yeah, don't. they like to do that. Well, I guess later on after I, I read this article, um, Samsung pulled all those ads that have been sitting out on YouTube for years. Uh, so you can no longer... Oh, run. they pulled them down? <laughs> yes, they pulled them down. Why? <laughs> because, I mean, so what? I mean, it's silliness. It's, it's just like, that's history. It's just like history of anything else, so... Whatever. Uh, you made fun of you yeah. made fun of something, and then you changed your mind. People are allowed to do that. Yeah. So, I mean... Yeah, like, I don't I don't begrudge them for that. Like, yeah. it was the right marketing I, move uh, at the time, and... I chuckled. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm still an iPhone guy, so I'm not gonna... But here's the weird thing, though, too, is... I thought, um... Like... They have other phones that don't have headphone jacks, right? Like, it's not just so. the 10. Yeah, I thought the, S, the S10... Oh, no, the S10 still had one. The I smaller... I thought the smaller ones didn't. I think, yeah. I think the deal was that, like, the... If I'm not getting this wrong, I'm not an Android expert, so right. no, people can... By no means you know, am I either, but... Email me, mattcast at gmail.com, yeah. and, and correct me, but I, I'm trying to look at images of the s9 the s9 and i thought the s9 didn't have a headphone jack but i could be totally wrong it's possible i don't know but anyway <laughs> it was uh, a chuckle more, this is more of a chuckle news story than anything else um yeah no more head jack, no more headphone jack and i think that is pretty much the trend i th- we're seeing with MIP, pretty much all of um uh, all of these mobile phones these days, these days, all smartphones. I think I'd, I'd be surprised in the next couple of years we even see headphone jack. We don't even know what know what a headphone jack is anymore. Um, a lot of these devices, you know. So, um, all right, other story caught my eye. This was in nine to five Mac, and I've been hearing a lot of stories lately about the Apple Watch. Um, I, I know there was somebody that was buried alive, buried alive after his home exploded, and he was able to call nine one one with his Apple Watch, and they were able to find him and rescue him, and he's living today because of his Apple Watch. Um, but this story actually was relating towards um, 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 team, uh, Apple teaming up with Eli Lilly, the the big pharmaceutical company, to study how iPhone and Apple Watch can help detect dementia, um, and. I find this interesting to see that a lot more, more and more health efforts are coming on with with Apple Watch. Do you have an you have, have an Apple Watch, right? Yeah, I have a Series Two. Okay, Series Two. So the Series Four does a lot of the health stuff, uh, even more so with the AFib and all that stuff. But um, I'm just finding this just fascinating that a lot more, a lot more uh, health companies are really starting to recognize that this this device could really be a helpful thing to. To help with your health, you know. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. As Apple adds more things, the fall detection, the I mean, that's helped a lot of people. Just even simple features like having a cellular um, one that doesn't require a phone. You know, people have been able to call for help using their Apple Watch. You know, pinned in a car and yeah. and you know the phone goes flying off somewhere and all you have is your Apple Watch on you and right. it's. I mean, there's there's lots of there's so many stories, there's lots of benefits, yeah, and and the whole heart thing and all of the different studies that they've been doing um, related to it, and I'm sure you know Apple we know is very interested in yeah. um, taking it even further if they can. So you know we've heard about glucose monitoring and all kinds of other um, things that are potential possibilities for future for future versions. So I don't think they're going to slow down. I mean they oh, no. they have a giant. Um, team of you know doctors and medical experts and all kinds of people on staff dedicated to you know this area health and fitness and all that 100%. sort of stuff so yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, i think it's great oh yeah 100 percent, 100 i'm i'm real excited about it and speaking of being excited about apple watch the next article again in the mac observer uh uh, Apple Watch is dominating, uh, uh, dominates a growing smartwatch market. They're saying its uh, sales were up 44% year over year uh, in the second quarter of 2019, and Apple, Apple Watch dominates that growing field. They sold over 6 million watches. Uh, yeah. Wow. Just, just, more than more than double uh, the next closest yeah. competitor, which <laughs> so, is Samsung, I think, yeah. by, by, at like 2 million. It's at about a fifty percent increase in units sold year to year, and then Samsung, right, to only two million units sold. Um, I mean, the experience, the really, the experience. Antidote is that um, I, when I'm out and about, I mean, I mostly see Apple watches on people's wrists, and then oh, occasionally, a, <laughs> occasionally a Samsung or a Fitbit. So, but I, I would definitely say it's probably a two, a, a two to one kind of ratio when I notice it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For so sure. that sounds about that sounds about spot on. I, 
I'm now I, I used to be always looking for people who if they have their iPhones. Now I look at everybody's wrist to see if they have an Apple Watch. And some sometimes <laughs> I'm more looking for a non Apple watches. That's yeah. the thing. Like well, I'm, yeah, I'm more surprised when I see a non Apple watch, and then I'm always curious, uh, what kind of device you know, what kind of device is it? I know there's some of those. And there's there's a lot of good looking devices out there that are not Apple watches. Yeah, to I, be I, honest, I think some of those Fitbit ones, I, they kind of look like an Apple watch, so they're deceiving. And but then you look closer. Oh no, there's no way that's an Apple watch. Um, but. Yeah, but Fitbit still still holds its own in the marketplace, and I think they people look at it because they don't want to spend the the, the higher cost on Apple Watch, which which makes total yeah. sense. I mean, depending upon what fe- what features you want and need. I mean, if you're looking for just basic health health features and time and those sorts of things, you can save yourself a lot of money with an with an alternate device. So oh. I love Apple and Apple Watch, of Me course, too. and that's. <laughs> my preferred device Me but too. i totally understand I, and what's funny is when i see people who have both <laughs> yeah well oh yeah you're right because i see someone have their fitbit up on their above their wrist and then the apple watch below on their wrist yeah a lot of people have multiple devices so which so is they're, interesting they're, to me. They're, tr- they're tracking they're double tracking here so uh ne- next story caught my eye was um the it was just on the verge. Uh, Disney announced a twelve ninety nine bundle for Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. But you I'm, know what I love? Yeah, go, no, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, you know what I love about this is that I think Disney's really going to drive the prices down. I think so. Across the board. I agree with you. Because everybody else is coming I mean, in the article. Of course, HBO Max was uh, rumored. Another room, room is another service that HBO is going to come out with. Um, that could be sixteen or seventeen a month. I mean, I'm I'm ready to cut the cord. I'm so tired of how much money I pay Comcast every month for my TV services. Um, I, I, oh, you I, haven't cut the cord yet. I have not cut the cable part of it. I mean, I have I have internet with them too. So, um, and they have decent internet. I'm very happy with that. But the the, the TV is just I know it's convenient, and that's the hard part. It's just getting my wife or uh, to to say, hey, here's how you get to this. Here's how you get to this, and you you, you got to we have to try to make it more uniform. I could say, you know what, use the Apple TV for everything, and most of that yeah. stuff should be accessible. I think that's where the challenges where you, when you do cut a, cut the cord is it, where do you go to watch this content? Especially you know if you want to be able to watch local programming, it's uh, until recently it was the TV app for me, yeah. and unfortunately it's becoming less and less the TV app right. because with this latest update, Apple bringing in the channels has right. really messed it up yep. really bad. And I hope they, at some point, get the feedback and recognize that they've really blown the customer experience there. Yep. Um, because having all that stuff mixed in means that I'm often seeing something that I'm not able to watch. And I'm not interested in signing up for another service. And so getting bombarded with an ad, because I was like, oh, this looks like a cool show. <laughs> oh, wait, they want me to sign up for Showtime or they want me to sign up for, like, let me make that choice on my own and let me control. I'd be happy if it was just a setting. I'm I'm hoping they'll add a setting that just says, look, only show me stuff that I have access to, that I've subscribed to. Like, let me make that choice. And, And it was that way until they added the channels thing. And it was great. It was it was glorious. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. loved it. About the only thing I complained about was the fact that Netflix wouldn't support it. Wow. Like that was the one outlier. And it, and consequently, I had cut way back on the number of shows that I was watching from Netflix. Sure. Because it was too much of a hassle. Like ninety percent of the stuff that I was looking for was in the TV app, and then it's like, oh yeah, I, won't, I heard about that Amazon thing or that um not Amazon that uh, Netflix thing. I've got to go open a separate app. Like, ugh, that's gross. <laughs> um, but I'm right back there now. You know, yeah. so it's like now I'm having to go to the Hulu app, and I'm having to go to the exactly uh, Amazon Prime app, and I'm having to go to to the Netflix app because if I don't do that in the TV app. I'm seeing a show and you tap on it and it's like, oh, that's not in anything that I subscribe to. So can't watch that. And no. it's it's a dis, it's a deflating experience. You know, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't sound like a huge deal till, you know, you're, you're just trying to browse. So unless you know what you want to watch and you know which service it's on, which yeah. it's not really obvious in the TV app, it's frustrating. No, so. I agree. Um, so, yeah. ESPN Plus, which I know Disney, who owns ESPN, 
as well yeah. as, as well as ABC. Uh, they uh, they are really trying to push that service because ESPN has just been a big uh, money uh, money cow for them. It's just a, it's just been horrible. There's a much money they've been losing on ESPN. So uh, losing subscribers. I think, and, a, I think it's a great that's a great bundle. I have I oh yeah, have it no is. it is nice very little interest in the ESPN part of it, right. but sports. for the price point. Um, with Disney, because I'm I, I'm almost definitely in on Disney, uh, just because it's you know Marvel and it's sure. Star Wars, yep. and exactly. I'm a giant nerd, and so I we need to too. have that. We, will, we both. <laughs> and really, what's going to probably happen um, is I'm going to discontinue my HBO yeah. and pick up. I was going to pick up just Disney, but now I'm very tempted to just get the bundle because yeah. I already have Hulu, although. I got Hulu in on the twelve dollars for one year deal that they did yeah, on Black Friday. Me too. Yeah. So I, I have to look and see when that ends. And yeah, the nine eight cents a month that was that's been quite. It quite might nice. be well, it's Black Friday, so it's coming up. Yeah, Thank so you. it'll be right around, probably right around. Because when yeah. is the that service? Those services launch in November. It looks like it. Yep, November twelfth. Yeah, okay. so it might be perfect my, timing. My time it perfect. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's. The one thing with uh, with um, with the Amazon Prime, I mean, you have to. There's no way you, you have to have a separate app for that. I mean, I don't. Amazon is not going to integrate, uh, or did, did they integrate to the? TV? It is. It yeah, is. It's, okay. it's already right. integrated. Yeah. Um, and Netflix. Yeah, I don't know what Netflix's deal is. Why they they won't? I think they're waiting on multi-user, which is coming right with the next update. Yeah. So I think that's part of the dilemma. Is they are a multi-user supported i mean hulu is as well yeah. um but the tv app doesn't support that so how does that work like if i'm watching and that data is flowing to and from yeah, yeah. um netflix you know whose account does it go to it goes to the primary account holders i guess it just gets kind of messy right. so i think that's part of it but i think also they're a little bit afraid to lose control to apple yeah. um but i i think that's i mean it doesn't that feels like a very short-sighted, like yeah. I'm not going into the Netflix app going, Ooh, look at all this <laughs> cool stuff. And yeah. I'm going to stick around in here. You know, I'm going in there because someone told me about a show and I'm like, I want to watch that. Right. And this is great. It's from, it's from Netflix. And I think more of these services need to recognize that, like as they're siloing up, as they're, you know, they're going to s- realize very, very quickly that, people care about shows yep. more than they care about which service or thing that it's on. Right. Sure. Um, and you know, I, I've been complaining about all these <laughs> services siloing up and I, yeah. I talked about it. To, I mentioned it to my wife and she mm-hmm. has the exact answers and, and we've already seen it happen with, um, with CBS all access. Right. Right. right is she's like, well, people are just going to, you know, they're going to binge. They're going to subscribe to one service one month, binge everything they want, and then cancel that, and then go to the next service for the next month. Yep. Um, and that's what these these people are going to find out. I think they're thinking, oh, we're going to have all this great content, and people are going to come here, and they're sub- subscribe, and they're going to stay. Mm-hmm. But they're not. They're going to come and watch the show that they want. You know, they're going to go like, I want to watch Picard. So let me watch all the oh, episodes of Picard you got this wait. season. <laughs> right, I, I'm, I'm done. You know, cancel. And now I'm going to go over to you know HBO for a month and and watch their next thing. And that's what I did. Now I'm going to go over to here for a month and watch their next thing. So they're going to find out really quick that people are pretty smart. Oh, and then and, uh, I did that with CBS All Access. I loved uh, Discovery, our Star Trek Discovery. I, so I subscribed to watch the shows and canceled. So I don't. I'm yeah. not currently a subscriber. What a pain I mean, in the butt. It like, is. why would you want your customers doing that? So I. I I think Disney, so getting back to the story here, I think Disney has the right approach, right? It's like, let's make it so darn affordable that it's actually more of a hassle to cancel and deal with that than just to keep the service, right? Right. And Netflix has been trying to drive their prices up. um, And so what I love about what what, um, Disney is doing is I think it's going to put a lot of pressure on Apple. It is. Apple TV Plus because I have a feeling that Apple was planning on pricing that at nine ninety nine, mm-hmm. and they're going to have a hard sell with Disney uh, and all that content that Disney has, and then right. Disney bundling it up with Hulu, which is mm-hmm. Hulu's amazing. It's got a ton of stuff, 
Um, so with Hulu and Disney, those two services alone could keep you in tons of really great content. And Hulu has some great original shows. Yep. Uh, Disney's going to be making a bunch of great original shows, and they have the they have the IP yep. to like really appeal to <laughs> the, the nerd market and also parents with you know children and stuff like that. So like, I think I think. I think overall we're going to see a lot of services being either bundled up, um, yeah. being given away. Like I know I get my Netflix actually through my, through my T-Mobile. Yeah, and I think I too. just saw that me too. Verizon or somebody is partnering with Hulu, I think. Yeah. And of course, AT&T has their uh, AT&T service bundled in with their phones. So I think you're going to see a lot more of that too, where it's like yep. you're going to buy something else and they're just going to throw the TV service in. No. Which is weird. Like it's like yeah. why would why would you take this thing where you had, you know, Netflix paying you for your your content or you were licensing it out and getting money, why would you silo it and then find out, well, we just gotta give it away because no one really wants to pay for it. Right. No, it's weird. I, I love the I'm a T Mobile customer, been been for over here, happy as all can be, and uh I get the Netflix discount, that's awesome. I just pay like yeah. what Three, I guess went to five bucks yeah, now. Extra, yeah, for yeah, the, for five the, bucks for the HD. So, uh, well, anyway, and, it's going to be interesting. If you, if you have a family, you need the multiple streams. That that's the real that's, reason I paid more. No, yeah, it's that, like that's we've true. got that's four true. people in the family. We've got to have more than one yep. one concurrent net Netflix stream. Yep, yep. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. to See what happens. But uh, great, great, great stuff there. And then, uh, and I did check. I'm totally wrong. Samsung Galaxy Nines do, do still have a headphone jack, so I guess the, the ten is the, the one. Ten, the ten yeah. doesn't, right? Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then last story I had in our our news for this week: um, iPhone, or I said iOS twelve adoption hits eighty eight percent. This is in Mac Rumors. Continues to outpace iOS eleven. Well, duh. <laughs> of course, it's going to. Uh, and uh, yeah, good to see. I, I I really love the fact that that Apple's. Uh, iOS and their operating systems always seem to have a very very high adoption rate compared to Android <laughs> because well, you look at yeah. Android I mean they're so all over the map with what uh, with how many versions are out there and I mean devices that are out there they're so old and don't they have the device that, yeah it's the device problem it's really device, right it's more devices than 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 the OS well and then and then two plus the whole carrier deal approval right. like that, most that of your nonsense. software updates come via your carrier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that nonsense. You know, in a lot of cases, I know. I know that's changing. Um, you would hope that's a factor. And then um, you also have the fact with Apple, though, too, that because they can control the hardware, they have uh, you know a non-moving target basically. Like they know, hey, we can make this backwards compatible all the way to 5s or 6s or whatever it might be, right? And then they can performance tweak things. So. I mean, I, it's no surprise iOS 12 is g- got a better adoption rate because, frankly, it runs better on older devices yep. than iOS 11 did. So, like, why wouldn't you upgrade? You you want to upgrade? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, uh, yep. That's so. 88 percent is iOS 12. Seven percent is 11, and five percent still of all those others out there. I, I think I I, I talked to somebody. Well, go ahead. I was going to say that's that's because a lot of people just have older devices, right, like because right. they last. And this is this is Apple's dilemma, right? This is the quarterly results call, right, right. And, and hearing that iPhone sales are the only thing that's down, right? They, they they had gains in every other product other than iPhone, and and it's not that iPhones aren't doing well. As a matter of fact, I think Tim Cook said they have more active iPhones in the marketplace than than ever before, which is great for services, but. Um, point is is like people are using their iPhones forever and they're handing them down and they're they're still useful devices you can have a four or five year old iPhone and it still runs great yeah uh, I would venture if you have a four or five year old Android mm. it's probably not so not not so not so awesome no I'm sure it's pretty slow uh, <laughs> so yeah that's uh that just keep keep it going uh, and you know when iOS 13 comes out uh, in the fall their adoption rates are going to go pretty high cuz i mean i think iOS 12 in a, uh, within the first uh, month there was uh, i think at least already a 10 or 15% so uh, for you know only a month uh, month in that's a, that's pretty well, good they, so. they add great new compelling features like memoji <laughs> it's right i, I was already Which I've po- used like i made one yeah and i don't think i've looked at it since <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just like I was with the Apple Card doing the iOS or iPad OS uh, 
uh, as soon as I start setting up iMessage, do you want to set up your 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 Memoji? I'm like, no, I don't want to do it right now. Uh, but <laughs> I have it on the iPad too, yeah, because it always was just on the iPhone. Now it's now it's going to be on the iPad as well. Wait, what's cool? What's cool? I know, and I I kind of joke about stuff like that, but I mean, those are like device selling, or more importantly, in this case, OS upgrading features, right? Those are the mm-hmm. kinds of like features that Apple can do really cool ads around, and somebody sees it and goes, oh, I want that. Let me upgrade, yeah. you know, right away because I want that. And That's even me. if they only make it one time and and then do nothing with it, it got them to upgrade. You know, this is the, the emoji is the. Uh, yeah. Do you remember? I I literally knew people who would buy a Mac because of the um, photo booth. Oh, like photo really? booth sold so many Macs. That's funny. Yeah, because people would go into the Apple Store, they'd go into like a, a Comp USA, and they'd have that running on the thing, mm, and they'd USA. get hooked to it, and they'd go, "Wow, this is really cool! I want this! I want this computer!" They don't have this on Windows, and it was such a silly app, right? <laughs> it was. It, was still it had all the effects and stuff like that, but it was really fun, yeah. and so it got people like feeling good about the computer, and they're like, "I, I want one of these. This is cool." Oh, and then they never cool. used that feature again, but then they had a Mac, and so then they were stoked. So. It's a win-win. Super, super cool. So, yeah. All right. Uh, that was some of the news stories we had of the day. We had some good discussion on that. Um, let's go on some of our topics for this week. Um, first topic was about app subscriptions. Um, you know, we're, I'm st- we're all starting to see a trend. A lot of apps are starting to charge uh, monthly or yearly fees on on subscriptions. I mean, let, let's face it. The the, uh, the app developers are just not making enough money anymore for doing a flat rate on on an app. You know, you charge ten dollars nine ninety nine or twenty nine dollars or whatever it is for you know one time charge. Um, you know, and, and you want, and then of course we're all expecting them to come up with new versions and come up with updates and you know try to support their you know support their models. So um, the one that caught my eye was uh, PDF Expert. Do you have you used this app before? Mm-hmm. Uh, I love PDF Experts. One of my Riedel, favorite. I love those guys. Riedel they makes make great the stuff. greatest products ever, and I'm 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 super stoked. And I, I and I may give in and do uh, this pro update. So. Um, we have a link in the show notes on this. this uh, it, it just came out with version 7 for the iPad and the iPhone. A um, lot more powerful uh, 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 tools that they put into this particular app, uh, including um, uh, uh, well, Redact uh, PDFs is now was part of 6. Now it is going to be included. They're going to, they are going to, if you were uh, a, a PDF 6, PDF Expert 6 Pro customer, which I was, a um, mm-hmm. lot of uh, this this uh, article on Rito's uh, website. Um, uh, a lot of the features are already going to be there, so you won't even need to upgrade. Really, the only three things which could make it a little more compelling to upgrade in the Pro subscription would be converting to an actual PDF, reducing the PDF size, which is awesome because that's always a challenge. And you create mm-hmm. your own, and you actually also can create your own tool set to uh, uh, set things up. So, but. Uh, Really, I, I, my discussion. I wanted to see what your thoughts were. Is just this, these app subscriptions in general. What what your thoughts were? Uh, would what these guys? You know, you and I really like the read a lot. I think it'd be. I'm happy to yeah. to, to support them. I um, I, I've given into them. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, and I've come to term come to come to terms with it. Yeah. And frankly, um, for most of the apps that I have subscriptions on. Uh, the pricing actually makes sense yeah. in most cases, and it's a better overall experience. So I have a subscription to Microsoft Office 365. Yeah. I have a subscription yep. to Adobe. I have a subscription to a number of yeah. iOS apps. Yeah. Uh, can't remember all of them. Yeah. And frankly, I don't really care much anymore. Yeah. Like, it used to be kind of a big thing for me. It was something that I did have stress and worry about, like... I kind of feel just like with subscription services, right? That there's a saturation point and you get to the point where it's like you really have to kind of pick and choose. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I actually have more of a dilemma with it with things like entertainment services because I do think that reaches a saturation point. I can only only handle so much um, money there. Like I said, you know, when Disney comes out, I'll probably cancel uh, HBO because mm-hmm. Game of Thrones isn't there anymore. Uh, and I know they have some great shows. They might keep me with Watchmen coming. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna have to make a call. But that's just the thing. That's the position it puts me in. Now getting back to software stuff, mm-hmm. um, what I'm finding is the way that most of these apps are priced, 
It really, I look at it like if this is a tool and this is an app that in the past I would have paid, you know, $30, $40 a year. So, you know, $29.99, $39.99 right. for a really good utility app, you know, something like um, like a PDF app. And I think PDF Expert is a little bit, it's right in that price range probably. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the pricing on it. It was $10 um, originally and now it's going to be well, $50. Oh, right? on I, this is on iOS. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, yeah. not on the Mac. The Mac, the Mac, I think, was a flat charge. Right. They still haven't come. I don't know what they're doing with that as of yet. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. We're on, we're iOS. We're, we're talking to iOS. <laughs> that's right. Um, right. No, we get, but, you can talk it. <laughs> um, but either way, it doesn't, it doesn't matter either side, right? Um, so I subscribe to like Ulysses and, and mm-hmm. uh, a few other apps that I find very, very useful. Um, I think I, ha- I even have a subscription to um, Carrot, the, you yeah. know, the weather app. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's really about matching the price. To, it's it's really about about the value proposition, right? You have to, and it's it, so nothing has really changed other than you're making a smaller payment every month versus one large payment every year when you know you have to do an upgrade or something like that. Um, the developer gets more revenue uh, on a more regular basis, which means I've generally found that they update the apps more frequently. Like they they have a vested interest in keeping that app up to date and you're not paying, you know, for those upgrades, right? You're just getting them as they push things out. So you get a little bit of benefit out of it. And at the end of the day, I just price it out like, Hey, this app is going to cost me. I usually try and even though a lot of these apps are monthly reoccurring, Mm -hmm. I like the ones and tend to prefer the ones that'll give me a yearly option. Mm -hmm. But either way in my head, that's how I'm pricing it up. I'm going, okay, is this app worth, you know, if it's if it's the, if the app is two dollars a month, right? Yeah. Is it worth twenty four dollars a year for me to have this? Is, is this app worth twenty five dollars a year to, to own? And most of the time, the answer is yes. It's just like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like, give that to me. Yep. Like I would totally pay that because if if they were putting a app out every year at twenty five dollars one time price for that version, I'd buy it. And if the upgrade came around and it was another twenty bucks, I'd do the upgrade. You know. So it's just like. It's software, right? You have to pay for your software if you want good quality software right. and you want to support the people who are creating that software. You're going to pay for it one way or another. You know, whether it's one time, whether it's monthly, however it works out. Yep. And you just fit it, fit it into your budget, especially if it's something that you need for you know your business or entertainment. It's a little harder harder to justify on just kind of fun little apps sometimes, but I have a few of those too. So yeah. it really just depends. It, you know, it's. It's the value proposition, right? You have yeah. to decide the value proposition. And if it's in there for you, then, you know, who cares if you're paying a subscription or you're paying one time? It's really no different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you said Office 365. Yeah, I mean, that I find that to be a very important uh, product to have. Uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I talked about it uh, at MacStock last, uh, uh, last month uh, with uh, the note. No, my, my talk was about notes apps. And one of them was was Microsoft OneNote, and as yeah, I, that's a great app. And when I as I talked about, I a lot of people didn't even know about what it could do, and so I just it was a good talk. So, uh, and um, and I have Adobe too, which is yeah. not cheap. Like I have oh, the yeah. full Adobe you know, Creative Cloud. Yeah. That's really expensive. Sixty bucks a month or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember what I pay. You, you have the but f- I mean, it doesn't matter because it's for my business. Like yeah, I use it. Photoshop. I use. Yeah. Um, Premiere XD, and, I use InDesign, I use all of these tools, yeah. and so it's it's a business expense for me. For a lot of people, they can't justify that. But guess what? You've got great alternatives you do. that are are cheaper, right? Yeah, Affinity it's, Photo it, and, and and some of those others, Pixelmator. Exactly. And, and there's there's there are some alternatives. So if you don't want to spend it, then you got the options. That's what's great about all the different apps out there. Um, yeah. And again, just w- one last thing on OneNote is it, it, you just you throw that out there too, as far as the cost. Uh, you know, you you only get five gigabytes of st- storage on OneDrive if you have a OneNote notebook. So, so those can fill up fast. So you're better off maybe. Why don't you you know go with an Office 365 subscription? You get the whole package and you're covered. And it's great tools from Microsoft. So you made me think of uh, a pick to talk about when we get All to right. that point. We'll put that in there. All right. I see. I got I got good good things here going here. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the article on the show notes. Um, that's kind of a, uh, an app slash uh, uh, discussion as far as the uh, app subscriptions. And I, I'm I'm glad to see that uh, they're going to do it because so then they can, they should be rewarded because Readle 
does great stuff. And, and that's it's great quality software. I mean, again, that's the value proposition, right? You can look at that and you can go, yeah, that is worth that because I know these guys put time and sweat and blood and tears yeah. into this app and they want it to be really, really great. And so you want to support something like that. No doubt. Yeah. And, and they're, they're not sponsoring the show, but I'm, I'm a big believer in, in their products. So. And here's the thing. If you need something cheaper, there are cheaper things out there. I mean, you 100%. can find something. 100%. I'm not going to say the user experience is going to be no, as great. That's, I found that out. And a that's, lot of times you get, get what you pay for. But, I mean, and it depends on your needs. Like, not everybody needs PDF Expert, to be honest. No, not everybody. So, that's, let's say, look at that grid. It'll show you all yeah. the things it can do. Do you need that you stuff? You can buy with not? Preview. You, you <laughs> it's prob- free. You probably could. So, uh, next topic. I wanted to talk a little bit about two-factor authentication. Um, two-factor authentication. Have you set up your two-factor authentication? I would hope so. Oh yeah, on everything. On everything. Yeah, and if, I, was, if, I was. If there's a two-factor option, I am using it, no doubt. I like. It's not even a question anymore. It's like, yeah. yes, sign me up. I was. I was very resistant at first because because I was in that that old school of. And then, like we talked about with the Apple uh, uh, Apple Card earlier, um, I, the reason I have two Apple IDs is because I felt that it's important to separate your App Store account and your iCloud account. Like, that's <laughs> kind of bite me now. Well, I finally got the, the those accounts all merged because my wife has an iCloud account on her own too. But now we put, I put it part of family family sharing. So right. now, at least now we're now sharing my 200 gig uh, iCloud plan. But um, but I didn't have a two factor set up. Well, what happened was I was forced, my hand was forced because I have a developer account. <laughs> so, and right. it's assigned to my app store account. So yeah, you have to have two factor authentication. So, and I was being stupid. I, should, I really should add this. I, I won't go back and it's, I agree. Um, it's interesting. I have the opposite problem because I have a developer account that's on an Apple ID that I had only set up for the developer account. Which I should have done. Well, except I have the dilemma now because I can't log into that account. Oh, that's right, because you have no devices to get the two-factor uh, Yeah, code. and so my only option is I would have to put that account on one of my devices, which means right. I have to like blow everything away on that device, and I'm like not willing to do that. No. And so I called up Apple, and I'm like, can you, can you do something? And they're like, nope. Nope. So I have to just like cancel that account. Oh, I can't even get in to cancel it. So I don't even know what I'm going to do. Oh, like, it's, <laughs> I have to wait for it to like expire and then not renew, yeah. and then and then um, and then sign up for a new one. Now they they used to have what was called two step verification, and I think right. I was using that for a gone. while, but that's gone. So you had to, you have to change over now to the uh, to the two step uh, two factor <laughs> authentication. I mean, it works great because if you if you have um, if you have multiple devices, which many of us do, um, whether it be your Mac, whether it be an iPhone, an iPad, um, it, you'll you'll see the code. Um, I know there is a lot of people don't know. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say a lot of people don't know that you can actually at any time get the code from your device. Yeah, that's the thing too. Because you know, as soon as I put in the code when I was doing the, the Apple Card, you know, it popped up on the iPad because I was. Uh, Attempting to sign out of my iPhone in on my iCloud. Right. This is, the, but I mean, like, so, on, like on demand. So I've yeah. had situations where people are like, "Oh, well, I signed in. It said it sent me the code. I never got the code. What am I supposed to do then?" Right? Yep. Um, and you can actually go into your device, into the settings, into the what is it? Password and I forget what it's called now. Right. Passwords. Password and security, security, something like that. Yeah, so you go into settings. I'm going to do it right now. Settings, and you go into your accounts. Password and accounts. And then it's password. Yeah, you just go into the account, like the Apple ID, and then you tap on password and security, and there's a link in there that says get verification code. And you can tap on that, and it'll give you a verification code on any one of your devices. Right. So, yep. good little tip. Yep, that is a real good tip. Um, and, and, and and the way to, uh, to, to, uh, to use it, you actually have to go in and... Uh, like we said, it pops up. You click allow on the other device. You click OK on the other device. Put the code in, and then away you go. So and it, yep. it, it's, it's it's painless, um, and and very easy to, to to go through and do those things. So um, I will tell you, it's weird when you have it on your shared. account. Do you have it on your shared like iTunes account? Yeah. So. <laughs> My wife will constantly oh, yeah. like text me or ask me, "Are you, are you logging? Are you logging into your?" Yeah. Oh yeah, she's already doing that. That's why I was arrested to it. The, she'll get the alert. She's like, "She does." Someone's yeah. trying to log in from you know San Diego, California. Yep, that's uh-huh. me. 
that's home. <laughs> uh, yep. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've had this texture many times. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so I'm, dialing, I'm, I'm logging into my Dell Helper account. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. So, but no, better be safe than sorry. Um, uh, we highly recommend doing that. I, I'm actually going to uh, put a link in the show notes from uh, iMore. Um, uh, there's a great article about uh, two-factor authentication that uh, you, yeah. should, you should view, re- you check uh, the, out. The number one thing, so w- one of the number one reasons why I started doing it on everything that offers it, especially the one where you use um, the Authenticator app, you know, the the QR code ones, which a lot of people find very annoying because they're like, why do I have to have this, you know, Authenticator app? Um, what put me over the, over the edge on that one is 1Password. So 1Password yep. has the scanner built into it. Right. So you can actually, um, when that QR code comes up, open up 1Password mm-hmm. and for the account that you're setting up, scan that in. And then what's cool with 1Password and the extension and, and how it works on iOS mm-hmm. is if you're logging in with your 1Password account, it will also automatically copy the code to your clipboard. Right, and then you just paste, and in you go. So they make it even easier. They do, yeah. One password, another one of my favorite apps uh, out there, definitely, definitely. So, um, last story of discussion we wanted to talk about this week was um, caught my eye was uh, Apple Music and iTunes Match. I think everybody gets a lot really confused about those two services. Mm-hmm. Um, I subscribe to both, which I'm probably crazy doing that, but I do. Yeah, you don't need both don't, anymore. You technically don't need both anymore, but um, really. I'll, I'll kind of start with iTunes Match. iTunes Match is a service that basically allows you to upload all of your music. You have, I think, the limit is about a hundred thousand songs, which is quite a bit. Um, and you upload it up into the into iCloud, and you have all that all that music in your iTunes account. And um, you, if, if you happen to have a lower bitrate version of that song, you can download that song in two fifty six uh, uh, kilobit uh, 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 sound, and uh, it uh, and then you have a, a cleaner copy of it. So that was really right. my motivation to why I did why I signed up for for iTunes Match. I thought before Apple Music, I thought it was the best bargain in the world, twenty four ninety nine a year. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm able to do that and have all these all these songs and any songs that you rip from CDs, any songs that your own CDs, of course, uh, and uh, any other songs that you happen to have in your library. Uh, if you happen to have lower versions of that, you're able to do that. Um, and you own the songs. They're, they are your songs, and so if you were to cancel iTunes uh, iTunes Match, then you know they can't take those away from you because they were your songs originally, um, right? Because you uploaded them up. Or, whereas Apple Music, on the other hand, is a subscription service, and they they provide you um, with uh, with all kinds of music for nine ninety nine a month or fourteen ninety nine a month for a family plan, and uh, give you access to a full stream catalog of music. So, what's nice about that is it gives you even more access to music so you really have to be a lover of music which i am and i find value with the apple music uh to, to do that so it's i guess that'd be the, the easiest way to sum it up you 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 can download music and have everything offline in apple music from apple music content so if mm-hmm. you wanted to put on let's say an ipod if you happen to have an ipod still or an ipod touch um uh, and you wanted to be offline with it absolutely no problem you don't have to you don't have to be on to be streaming it with a lot of other services you do um, yep. so that, that's one of the, one of the nice benefits you have, uh, with Apple music. Um, what are your thoughts on those two services? Yeah. Um, again, like I, you don't, I mean, the match portion of it works with Apple music the same way it works with mm-hmm. iTunes match. Uh, now it wasn't that way originally, right. but, um, anything that is quote unquote matched and uploaded, um, you can still redownload, you can do the higher level version on the matched uploaded stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, All of those sorts of things. So I had both for a while. And then when they changed that, I went ahead and canceled my, my match. So, um, you know, the main reason to only have match, I guess, is is if you just don't want the Apple, the Apple music stuff, if you, if you're not interested in, because I think match is 25 bucks a year. Right versus 10 bucks a month right so it's a cheaper it's a cheaper alternative if all you want to do is have access you know from all your devices to be able to upload and stream your own personal personal music library right which a lot of us um, are not doing anymore really because of yeah streaming. well like since i got apple music yeah no I, I don't and i don't even i don't even like really worry about it much anymore right it's right. just like i know i have everything and you know of course 
if you're going to do it and you're going to do the match thing, I would even still recommend, you know, take your entire ripped library before you sign up and just make sure you have a backup of it, you know, just in case things happen, right? So you should have just an archive of that somewhere because you never want to you never want to lose it. That's a lot of time and money and effort um, putting together large collections. And I know people who have huge collections. I don't have a huge collection, but mm-hmm. I've you know I ripped a lot of uh, CDs and stuff like that. But frankly, a lot of my ripped versions, I just you know they it matched them, and I got rid of my low quality ones, and I just mm-hmm. used the stuff straight out of Apple Music because yeah, okay. I'm not planning on canceling. I actually have the and I actually have the family plan, right, so. Right, right. You know, everybody in my family's on it, and we all absolutely love it. So, yeah. I think they're gr- I think they're both great services. Yeah, just um, kind of, it just depending upon what what you want and what you want to do. What to um, uh, fit yeah. your needs. And with more services coming on board, I'm still hoping that Apple, at some point, decides to do like a, a you know, like an Amazon Prime or an Apple Prime account that just includes it like should. everything, like. I, iCloud, Apple TV, uh, you know, like the family pri- Apple Prime account is what I want. So I want, you know, family iCloud storage, family uh, Apple Music, fa- family Apple TV Plus, family Apple Arcade, and I want to pay one one price, you know. Just tell me what that price is. Yeah, and I would probably happily pay it. Absolutely. All right, uh, let's uh, kick. I have a couple tips I wanted to uh, share with everybody. Um, cool. The... Um, First one was, uh, were you aware of uh, how to disable your iPhone's uh, attention aware feature? There, w- there was. Um, um, I know it's possible. I don't think I've ever done it. Yeah, because um, uh, I would assume I know where it is, but yeah. So if you have an iPhone 10 or later, you might notice that your device does some kind of weird things automatically. It includes like things like your screen won't dim if you're facing it. The ringer's volume might go lower if you're while you're facing the screen because of uh, because of the attention aware uh, feature. You can disable this by uh, just stopping those alerts and noises from lowering uh, uh, from the noises from lowering automatically and the screen dim by going into this setting here. If you follow along to me here, if you go into your iPhone, you go to General, and then you tap Accessibility, and then you tap Face ID and Attention. Uh, you there is a setting in there, uh, Attention Aware features. You can toggle that to off. And now hmm. you will have. It wasn't more. where I thought it was. Yeah, so it's in accessibility because it it's buried a little bit by there. So, so now you have more control of your device's subtle functions because uh, it's a uh, it's a lot easier to, instead of you having it to be doing those things you don't want it to do. So there are some uh, there are, are some uh, good things to have that turn uh, off. Oh, now you're gonna bring you you are gonna bring up my pet peeve because yeah. it is also where I thought it would be. Okay. What's your pet Which piece? is settings. <laughs> well, you can also access it through settings, general, or not general, settings. Where the heck did it go? Uh, <laughs> where the face ID thing is. Face ID and passcode. Okay, you can go in there too. Yes. And the settings are in there. So you have uh, require attention for face ID and attention aware features. I wonder if there is there more granular control or is it just toggle on or off attention aware features? As far as I found, it was just on or off. Okay, yeah. So they also have it in Face ID and passcode, and that's my pet peeve. Is and I and I have to levy it against Apple because I I always levied this against Microsoft too. They they pioneered this technique, which is let's have the same setting toggle and thing in like three different places. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Yeah. And it's 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 annoying. Yeah. I think they think it's being convenient because they don't know where people are going to go. But I would argue, make your OS better and make it make more sense. Like there should only be one place to toggle these things on and off. Right, there right. shouldn't be there, three places. There is. I didn't even know it was in there. Yeah, face ID and passcode under yeah. under the the, the uh, iPhone ten. And that's where I would have assumed assumed it was. Um, I guess you know maybe if if you need accessibility features, it also makes sense for it to be there because it sort of consolidates. Because it really could be of a of benefit to people who need those disabled or uh, controlled for accessibility. So I, you know, I do get it to a certain degree, yeah. but I think it creates ultimately a confusing user experience. It 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 takes away from consistency, right? right. It's just like because so, somebody's going to tell you it's one place, and then you're going to go like not remember it, and then somebody else is going to tell you it's another place, and you're going to be like, wait a minute. What? What? Oh, yeah. uh, huh? Yeah, 
exactly. <laughs> uh, but uh, yep, those there's uh, my, no, my first tip, and then we have two more here. Uh, oh, and sorry, the other thing is, and then you wonder if they're different, right? They're like, not. Is this really the same same feature? It is. Because it's in two places. Like, why would you have it in two places if right. it's the same thing? I agree with you. It's, it, I've seen it all the time. They have it in, like, two or three different places sometimes. Um, yeah. But uh, I'll, I have an Apple TV tip. I don't talk about that enough. I need to talk about Apple TV more. Because it is, it, it is in our slogan here, Apple TV. Um, uh, the fourth gen and higher of the, uh, Apple TV, there is a way to delete apps. And once you download them, if you don't want them anymore. Um, so really what, what you do is you take the remote control and you highlight by moving it around with the touch pad on the, on the remote to the app. And then you push and hold the play pause button until it, until it comes up with a button uh, uh, saying uh, press play for more for options. Then the menu mm-hmm. comes up at, after that point. Then you click the delete button um, and you just delete the, the app and it's gone. I think you can also hide them, right? Can you, you still can hide, hide them? them? Yep, there's two other ways of doing it too. Yeah, if you delete apps from the settings app, you can go to settings, general, and then you can go into manage storage. And if you want to go through, you can you can blow away apps like right then and there by scrolling through each one of the apps that's listed in the storage by clicking the trash can, and it'll delete those as well. And then yes, what the other one that you mentioned is the delete uh, hiding the apps. Uh, you you can hide apps on the second gen and the third gen, but you can only hide apps and not delete them. Um, so whereas uh, uh, whereas on the other apps that you can you can actually push and, and actually do the same thing by unhiding and, and hiding going in the settings. Uh, so yes, you can, so you can do that. So I got one for you. Right. If you have an Apple TV with a the the Siri remote, so I guess yep. that'd be your Apple TV fourth gen. Right. Did third gen have that that too? I don't remember. I don't think so. No. Um, did you know that you and and if you use Find My Find My, what do, they, what do we call it now? Find My device. I guess it's just going to be called Find My. Find My on iOS thirteen. <laughs> but Find My iPhone or whatever it might be, uh, you can use that with your Apple TV. A lot of people don't know that. I did not know that. What's all, how do you find that? You just you activate the Siri remote and say find my iPhone, find my wife's iPhone. And then what it'll do is it just activates the sound thing, right? Oh, oh, okay. So it'll play the alert sound for you. You can also do that with your HomePod. But a lot of people don't know you can actually do it with an Apple TV too. So if you're running around your house and you're in your living room and you're like, where's my dang iPhone? You can, uh, in your Siri remotes nearby, you can use that. That is an excellent bonus tip. I won't do it because I have two HomePods sitting next to each other here next to me here. So (laughs) as soon as I say that, Hey, lady, uh, it'll go off. So, right. Um, all right. One last tip here, and then we'll go with some app picks. Um, uh, sharing your location on a phone. A quick way is uh, being able to open a new and previously opened text chat with a person. And then when you're typing, you want to share your location with them. Type in the phrase, I'm at, and then press the space bar at the word Ooh, at. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And then in the predictive text area of the keyboard, you just tap current location. It shows up right in that bar. It's so cool. And then you just tap that little button and it brings you to a, a map of where you are. And it sends that uh-huh. in the text on the fly right there, then and there. I always like tap. Oh, that's for my, yeah, my location. So I, I always tap the little um, icon of the person up at the up at the top, right. you know. And then there's a button that says like share my location. It, I think that's more. So is this one more like a one-off? Like it just gives them mm-hmm. like. A, a location map with a pin versus the other way I think is through uh, find my friends. Right. And you can tell it, share my location right. for an hour, share my location for a day, share my location for, you know, indefinitely, I think there are the three options if I'm remembering. Right. Yep. Cause I use that one with my kids all the time. Cause I don't, I don't let them, uh, I don't let them follow me all the time, <laughs> but occasionally I might want them to know where I'm at. So I selectively allow them to. Of course, the opposite is not true. I have uh, I have location turned on for me on their devices through the parental controls and have it set so they can't turn it off. Yeah, yeah, no, yep. But it puts the map of the actual <laughs> location of where you are right then and there. So, um, all right. So you said you had an app pick. I'm gonna let you go first and uh, tell us what you uh, came up with. Uh, oh, as, so because we, we were talking because we were talking about subscription apps. Mm-hmm. Um. The and I guess this is maybe more on the Mac side, a little bit on the iOS side because there are some iOS mm-hmm. uh, companion apps in this, and one of them I mentioned already is Ulysses, mm-hmm. um, which is a great uh, Markdown text editor app. Um, but um, Set App. Oh yeah, I'm a subscriber to Set App. 
Um, and that they have iOS? is. Uh, some of the apps in there have iOS companion apps that, oh. that normally are subscription apps. Okay. So Ulysses is a great example of this. So Ulysses, I think, is for year. I can't remember the price on it now. Um, but you pay, it's a monthly subscription app, and they have an iOS version of the app that you do need to subscribe to, subscribe to as well. So you kind of get both. Oh, yeah, yeah there it is. Um, okay. Yeah, I can't remember all of the apps. I know there's a handful of them that I use. Um that have iOS companion apps. So, so it's that a, it was just kind of a one that's worth looking into. So you're listening if you're looking is a writing and markdown editor, right? Exactly. And then, and then, and yep. there's an iOS version of that too. Will will set up yep. allow you to get the app on iOS without having to pay for it. Exactly. Yep. It will. Okay, I'll have to try that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? I will have to try that out. So I'm gonna make sure to, <laughs> I type this in our show notes so we. Uh, Make sure we yeah, I'll have to pull, I'll pull up set up and I'll see if I can find some of the others. I just can't remember off the top of my head. The Ulysses is the one that I use probably the most frequently okay. that I know is on iOS. Um, but there are a few in there. Right, I'll have to check that out. I, I didn't see I, I learned something now because I'm really loving set up. I, uh, if, if anybody doesn't know what set up is, it's basically like a subscription service for apps, and majority of them are Mac. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of fun because you know I used to we get those Mac bundles and all that stuff. It's like why am I spending all this money on these bundles? Well, I could just have a subscription uh, of this and have and download all these great apps that are that are, that are part of it. So, uh, so yeah, that that that's great. So, um, one app I have was uh, I wanted to uh, suggest is uh, VLC. VLC is uh, has been around forever uh, as far as on, on any platform, Mac, Windows, uh, but they their their version of uh, of it on iOS is frankly amazing. I mean, I just find it amazing the fact that you can um, uh, you can add videos pretty much on the fly on your and pretty much what I do it all the time is on the iPad. I uh, I go in and you know you can you can actually go in here and uh, t- turn your iPad into a uh, sharing device and then you can copy uh, the files by browsing to it uh, from its IP address and just copying these videos over. Have you, have you used this before? Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, okay. All the time. I, I figured you did. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, th- and that's, what's great about it. Is you, you can do that. You can stream by doing a network stream by, by grabbing videos and being able to play you know, right from VLC. Um, it, it does let you get to cloud services. So you actually can connect to your Dropbox, uh, Google drive box or OneDrive login. If you have any videos uh, stored there, um, just, probably one of the most powerful video uh, players out there. Um, and I use it all the time on my Mac. I use it on iPhone. Even has, You even actually can use it on the Apple Watch, too. I didn't even realize that. Um, that's, I don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, but the, you might be able to, you might want to watch a little video on your watch. And then, of course, it's got a companion Apple TV version, too. So it goes across all four platforms, and, and, and Mac as well. So uh, check it out. It's VLC for mobile. It's made by, it, it's a company called Video Land. It's absolutely free. Um, and I'll have show notes, link in the show notes for that. And my last uh, app was going to be uh, Good Reader, and Good Reader's been around for a long time. Um, and Forever, yeah. They they had not updated for a long time either, but they finally came out with, with a, a new version, and I'm 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 frankly I'm I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Um, the way it was designed before was really hard to, to to navigate, but the cool thing about it is is it's 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 basically like a good PDF annotator. It's a file manager, and managing files can always be a challenge. Obviously, now we have um, uh, we have the Files app in in iOS, uh, so it's you, you can use that to manage files. But uh, Good Reader does give you a lot of great ways of being able to manage files. Uh, uh, and again, this this app's around. Uh, I've been reading this; it's been around for ten years now. It was first released uh, ten years ago. God, I remember that two thousand nine. <laughs> it was probably one of the first apps I bought when I got my iPad too in t- 2010, 2011. Um, and uh, they, they've really done a huge upgrade on this, and I've been very, very impressed with it. Um, did you have any thoughts on uh, this app? Um, no, I mean, I, I used it in the early days. I honestly have not used it yeah. recently, but I know it's a great app for like managing and, and just dealing with PDFs. Yeah, so uh, it's five ninety nine for uh, the. Uh, the initial app, and then you can. There's an in, there's an in um, app purchase of uh, of a pro pack uh, that you could check out as well. I'll have another link of that on the show notes, and uh, we'll uh, and and that uh, uh, some of our app picks. So, 
gosh, our, our, our time has come to a close here, Adam, and I can't I can't thank you enough for being here. And uh, Yo, thanks really, for having really me. Really appreciate you being here. Please uh, share with the audience where everybody can find you at, as, as far as your uh, your oh, endeavors. Sure, that that's super simple. Um, mm-hmm. MacCast dot com and MacCast on whatever your favorite social media platform is. Yeah, he's everywhere. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, really appreciate you being here. So let's uh, wrap things up. That is a wrap for this week. Uh, please send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our email address, feedback at intouchwithios.com. You can follow us on Twitter at InTouchWithIOS. You can also subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, just go to our website at InTouchWithIOS.com, where all the links to listen to us are there. I am Dave Ginsberg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Again, Adam, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon.